name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. Tonight we have a new guest on the show, <laughs> Mr. Lindley Farley. He's a director and a, and a writer, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good to be here. So, uh, once again, a wonderful person from JT. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I will try to be that wonderful person no, for you. <laughs> live, up to, live up to the JT standard. Right. So, um, so why don't you talk a little about, you're, you're a director and you're, you're a writer. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been working on films? Well, I mean, I started when I was a young lad, and, and I think I grew up at exactly the right time for my temperament. Um, the films that came out when I was 10, 11, 12, you had films like The Godfather, The Sting, um, The French Connection, Shaft, and these films had an impact. But they were also New York films, right. so films I could identify with. And so uh, one Christmas, my father, I asked him for one. He bought me a Super 8 camera. And for the next couple of years, I would go around shooting sometimes scenes from those movies right. to just you know, get the feel. Because um, movies have a sort of similar impact on writers, or sorry, writers, directors, and actors. I call it the Steve McQueen effect. Mm -hmm. When you go and see a movie that's powerful, and, especially, and you leave the movie feeling like Steve McQueen. Right. Now, the uh, proposition is which direction you want to go. Do I want to be Steve McQueen, or do I want to be the guy who direct Steve McQueen. I was the guy who wanted to direct Steve McQueen. So even though it might have felt like Steve McQueen, I wanted to direct Steve McQueen. And that became my sort of uh, impetus. Well, I actually met Steve McQueen once. <laughs> really? But it was, it was before, I, when I was still living in New York, before I went to Hollywood oh, okay. and all this stuff. Yeah. And he was jogging in Central Park with his son. And I guess he was working on a film. Yeah. He had like, like wild red hair That's, and a yeah, beard. That was his late And yeah, I was he, like, he, he, I was like, I couldn't talk to him, and he just started goofing on yeah, me. Yeah, he made an Ibsen film. Right, yeah. and then yeah. he just shook my hand, and yeah. it was like I was left dumbfounded. <laughs> I, I was always a great Steve McQueen yeah. fan. Yeah, and his son was good, too. Chad McQueen as an yeah. actor, too. Um, uh, so what was, so you, you started out young, mm -hmm. and, and so t give us a little well, bit then, of Well, you know, path. then I, I, yeah, I went to college, and, and I, um, what uh, really got me going in terms of a film career was making my first short film, right. a film called Boss of the Ballet I made in 1989. It's about two sanitation workers who decide to put on a ballet for the sanitation contest. Oh, that sounds cool. It's mm -hmm. really fun. And, um, and, what ha and I just found the brochure to a, a film festival he did. I had tied for second place. Wow. Who I tied with was Alexander Payne, who made Sideways. Right. And, Great uh, film. Yeah. yeah. And who I beat was the guy who, David O. Russell. I didn't even know David Ross was on the program, right. so I just saw it recently, and I just came across and said, wow, so I, I beat David Ross and tied for a second place. I was like, whoever came in first, I don't know, but... Yeah. but uh, whoever came like, in first probably is, is like, last now. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so then, uh, yeah. Uh, but Boss Without Ballet did... Was that your first uh, That was my film, first, yeah, film sound festival? film with, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the Breckenridge Film Festival, 1990, I believe. Right. And... Um, what was it like when you, when you were there? I mean, it was great. And, and one of the really cool moments, well, I had two. One, I had dinner with um, uh, Eva Marie Saint and her husband, Jeffrey oh, wow. Hayden, who I think just passed away. And then the other was, after the movie, um, John Voight called me over and says, I like your film, but those characters are not good. So they were bad people. He's a scary guy. Right? Yeah. I was like, oh, so, yeah, I was like, yeah, but you took a serious? I mean, I, I, and he was defending my film. I've also learned something. You know, if you have to defend your film to people who don't like it, right. never, never. Just let them talk and say, I didn't like it. Here's why. Right. Okay, I'll and do better next then time. Then you speak to the next guy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, the, so then you, you've done music videos? I did, yeah. I, I did some music. I, I, the, sort of the main one I did, I did one in Turkey yeah. uh, for an actress there. And that was the one I was actually hired for. And did, Go over it, but, but I've done music videos. But the next uh, phase I was just was my f feature film, The Bull's Night Out, right. which we made in 1995. Uh, right? And uh, here's, a, here's a picture of it, <laughs> right here. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's yeah, that, available. Is it available? Yeah, it's on <laughs> iTunes and uh, iTunes. Amazon, etc. Cool. Um, but the, the, the you know, and I, what's as you probably well know, the right. more you do it, the more you become accomplished at it. Right. Uh, what I was surprised at on my first film, and this goes back to an actor I'd worked with, um, who, after he finished, boss of the ballet, right. he said, um, Lily's a nice guy, but he really doesn't know how to handle actors. And that, I really took that to heart, and I, I thought, because yeah, no other actor had problems, but he was a new actor, but that's not the point, but I had to think about that. Right. And so when I went to the next film, I said, you know what it was, when the first film, I was so in awe of the equipment, right. and 
and I'm dealing with the DP and like, oh, well, you know, what lens are we gonna use in this? And the you know, actors wait over here while I talk to him about the important stuff. Yeah. And this actor took that to heart. And I, so from then on, it was like, okay. Well, it's learning. It's a learning. You're a learning, learning more curve, on yeah, the yeah. set, precisely. Yeah. Than you do in any school. Or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. That. Right, right. I mean, uh, yeah. And really, it's it's managing people. If you're a director, it's not just man yeah. uh, you have to manage the cast too. I call it the the director's the chief collaborator. Right. He has to take the input from everybody, and be generous about it. I, I try to use everybody's ideas. I don't. Uh, you, what do you? What, what is that? You or, or you know? And, right. <laughs> so that's no. That's and that's the way you have to. I mean, yeah. if you if it can't be just all you. Right. Because. Uh, Unless you're Orson Welles, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you're also you're also involved currently, I guess, in a web series as well. Yeah, I'm doing this thing uh, now. We've shot three episodes of a um, web series called Fez Belcher. Right. It's about an '80s rock star who lives in the East Village, who's suddenly being gentrified out, but he's not given up the dream of being a rock star. Right. And uh, so it's all the misadventures. Of the the first episode, which I wish I had to show you, was. Um, he runs into a fan from the 80s who doesn't remember him. Oh, and he's God. got to convince the fan who he is. And, the, and so it's a reversal of... <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, which, which is also funny. I was just talking about Lenny Bruce and Alan Ginsberg. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. just today, a matter of fact, yeah. right before we shot, yeah. East to, to, people, to, to a young person, and they yeah. were thinking, you know, I think I've heard that name. You know, it's like yeah. Lenny Bruce. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. And even, even when you talk about, like, uh, famous musicians of the mm. 60s and 70s, so many people just don't know who they are. What was the, you just made, oh, I'll have a funny story. I mean, uh, um, I don't drink. One day I happened to be in Starbucks right. about five, three, maybe three, four years ago when the Beatles just come out on iTunes. The big, there were big billboards right. everywhere, the Beatles on iTunes. And there were these two young girls in front of me, and one said to the other, I know one was married to Yoko Ono. <laughs> Okay. And one got shot, one died, and I said, my God, you know, they have no, yeah. That's it. But you know what that proves to me? Right. Nobody's fame is safe. You know who the most famous star of the 20th century was? I don't know. Probably number for number, the most biggest American star was probably Al Jolson. Wow. Oh, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. In He was right. radio, right. He was, uh, oh, uh, stage. Uh, he was the first talkie. Right, right yeah, <laughs> movie films, he did it all. And, right. and, and in fact, to get an Al Jolson to play your song, he had right. to get uh, writing credit. Right. Who knows who Al Jolson is today? Only people my age and maybe your yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, biggest star of the 20th century. But, but you know, so a little bit, tell a little bit more, and maybe we could share yeah, the, yeah. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about the, uh, your website. Oh, yeah, so, we, uh, so, so we've shot three episodes, and um, it, it's, 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 it's um, really whimsical. I'm get, we're getting ready to shoot the fourth episode, but it'll be available soon on, on, okay. online. And, uh, uh, do you have something to show us? Uh, I have, yeah, this is a, 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 a sidebar feature. So basically, uh, a Fez Belcher lives in East Village. Right. And um, so we have the side character. We made a, 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 a political commercial for it called uh, Skip Sanchez. Oh. It's called City S S Councilman Skip Sanchez. Okay. And uh, that's what we're going to show, and that's okay. uh, so, relates uh, to the web series. So let's uh, let's share this uh, yeah. this video yeah. with our audience. So enjoy. Okay. A cold firehouse, a burned down church, shuttered factories with empty warehouses and vacant lots. This is the Brooklyn I grew up in. I'm Skip Sanchez. You know, this is our community. But now, thanks, oh, Skip Sanchez. Get out of thanks to me, this is a place where businesses flourish, where kids can finally play in the park. My kids don't even play in this park anymore. Yeah. And crime, crime is way down. This is a place where businesses flourish, where kids can... But best of all are these tall, gleaming, shiny, beautiful towers that replace the factories where our parents used to work.
I'm Skip Sanchez, and I approve this ad. <laughs> that was a good one. That was oh, great. Thank you. So, uh, so this is it's a stunt. That is part of the web series. Well, the, 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 it's, that's an outlier because the yeah. character, uh, this character, uh, Skip Sanchez, is going to need a room to rent right. from. So he's going to rent from uh, the main character, and so now we have this his back. To, and the idea of the web series to give each inter interchange uh, each, each character in there right. their own little episode that uh, focuses around uh, um, Fez Belcher, who's the lead. The cool. The main and who is, who is the uh, who is plays the lead? Uh, Greg Adair, okay. good act, uh, very good actor, and um, this actor was played by uh, Michael Calderon. Very good. Yeah. I mean, his voice is yeah, yeah. so cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like the way he was running. Too. Yeah, we've worked with him many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hilarious. So, casting. Do you find that um, as a, an accomplished and mm. uh, and a director, do you find you, you use a lot of the same cast? And, and I do, them? yeah, yeah. It's comfortable, and you know, you, they, they know what you want, uh, and you miss, make your little adjustments rather than, you know, here's the great, I know what you can do. Right, right. Yeah. It's interesting. I do the same thing with yeah, yeah. My, my, my little shows that mm -hmm. I do. But, you know, it's, so, it's interesting, you know, that, mm -hmm. and you look at many actors, many directors, they use the, a lot of the same. Yeah, people. I mean, it's, of course, you want to branch out, and you want to work with, you know, interesting people, and, and I'm always, Looking for new talent that's gonna. So, is casting uh, when you do something like this? Do you have a casting call? How well, does it work? Well, in this case, I knew everybody. Oh, so, okay. but uh, I'll call JT. JT oh, cast oh. another film I did right. um, with that same lead actor. That was called To Be Frank, right. uh, which is as a short I didn't put out uh, uh, about uh, um, two brothers named Frank who meet at their father's funeral for the first time. Right. Oh, that's and, interesting. Yeah, and they're both named Frank. One's a fireman. One's a comedian, and oh. they. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. And and their brothers are they? They're uh, brothers who never met. It's funny, like my brother George, <laughs> and the and my other brother George, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. So, what do you have any new projects other than this that you're working uh, on? Well, Fez Belcher is the main. What happened with Fez Belcher is an interesting. I was making a series of shorts, just random shorts, I was going to put together. Right. And the first one, the first Fez story was called um, "My Biggest Fan," which is, of course, the story about him meeting the fan in the street. Right. And I thought, you know what, there's a good follow-up to this. And then I made the follow-up, and then I made the third. And I said, you know what, this is going to be a series. Right. And then, so that's why I took the um, Skip Sanchez and put him into this, so the what, fourth episode. So you have a, what, you know, in terms of marketing mm -hmm. a web series, I mean, it seems like it's a difficult thing to do. It is, yeah. It's, it's really ab uh, about um, networking, right. obviously. Uh, 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 something I've never done before. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, but... Uh, uh, Twittering because evidently through Twitter it goes from it, it can uh, have many more shares than right. if you do it on Facebook. And right. So, um, but also have people who want to look at it. So, right. so we're, we have. A, so, are you looking to take this to like a, a different venue at some point, or do you want? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I I have to see what it becomes. I have to be fired up. I mean, I would love it to be a, like a great HBO series. In fact, right. we're going to show it to somebody who's oh, at, cool. at Showtime. Yeah, but I don't know. You know, I, so I, 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 yeah, I do it. For the love of it, and then that's the the byproduct is right. let's market it. Let's well, have somebody market it if, for me. If people who stay in the business as yeah. long as you yeah. and possibly me, if yeah. I'm still on the fringe of it, do it for love. That, that's what they really do. I yeah, mean, that's exactly. why they're here they, yeah. because they can't live without it. And you can't do. I I don't see any other other way to do it. I yeah. uh, um, you know, to hang on. I mean, I being on a film set is not my favorite place in the world. Right. I mean, I I what's great about the web series, the short. Videos. I'm there for a day. I put my full focus on on right. on creating it, take it home and edit it, and I, and it maybe I've even written it in a half hour. So right. it's a compressed time. Right. Being on a feature film set, it's it's yeah, it's yeah. tough. And and you know you you you're constantly draining, draining yourself of ideas, and you're tired and fatigued. So even if you're an actor, it's it's precisely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're waiting around all day. Because yeah. you're waiting for your scene. In the Bulls Night mm -hmm. Out, we had a scene which is seven minute scene we had to shoot in right. one afternoon. Right. And it's four our actors arguing, yelling at each other. Right. And at, at the end of it, we're, I'm exhausted. I know the actors are exhausted, but I remember the AD coming to me, assistant director coming to me, saying, "Okay, what's next?" Right. I'm like, well, didn't we see what we just did? <laughs> Why we? <laughs> okay. But but also sometimes you shoot out of order, though. I mean. Yeah. I well, this was yeah. This was mm -hmm. it, whatever it was. It was just intense, and it was a long day of yelling. Right. And that's yeah. one thing. Like even when I worked on Cagney and Lacey, mm -hmm. we'd have 16-hour shoots. Yeah. And you'd only get like maybe five mm -hmm. minutes. Well, that's one thing minutes. I've learned. Mm -hmm. TV's a little different because you have. I mean, budgets are. Right. But don't burn your on a low budget film like mine. Right. I don't burn my crew out. Right. 
are the cast that make sure that they, they right. get enough sleep, that, that, that they're home. If, yeah, if, but on a if network we do a show, they want to get burned I know, I think it's yeah, gold yeah, time. Yeah, know, exactly. Gold right, gold. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, low budget, you can't. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. they won't show up the next day. <laughs> right. But it, I am amazed at the crew that even that I get from my, my little shows that I do mm. outside of the studio. They're so dedicated. I mean, the yeah. crew, I mean, once a, once a crew member is part of your show. Right. It's and you have got to be loyal to them. Oh, right. It's, it's got to be mutual. It's a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a family thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've heard of, not that I see, but, you know, several people who big time, you know, their crew, and, you know, it's right. like, and it's on a low budget, come on, you know, like you're going to, yeah. Right. Can you run get me some coffee now while I'm <laughs> sitting here um, looking important? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, and I used to, I also used to look, at, when I worked on Cagney Lacey, I'd see the checks, because we work on there yeah. every week. You right. Know? And you'd see the people that was the assistant cameraman, and they say, wow, it's a little low, and I'm looking at the check, like, wow. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's amazing how much money yeah. a few people make in the business. Yes, it's you know? true, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It's, and, it's, and, and the rest are the uh, below-the-line guys. It's, it's crazy. I mean, and it's, it's, it's been that way, and, and it's even, I think it's getting worse now. Yeah, and, uh, um... To a certain extent, because at least for actors, it depends what guild or union you belong right. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. For actors, day players, yeah. Forget it. I mean, yeah. it's the, the amount of I mean the amount of paid work for actors is mm -hmm. so much less mm -hmm. than the, the amount of non paid work that actors yeah. are forced to do. Right, you know? right. Yeah. And it's it's just the way it is. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, somebody. I was, what's your favorite film of all time? Uh, I, I'd say. Uh, Wow, that's a, that's actually a good. That's a. I like. I'll uh, give you a rule. Yes. If you go home tonight, you'll watch from beginning to end. No, but I'll tell you. The, um, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Um, the oh, George. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah uh, uh, what's it, whatever the name of that show Yankee is. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah. I watched that. It used to be on. There used to be a show called Million Dollar Movie. Oh, don't get me started in the Million Dollar and, Movie. And when I was a little kid, five days a week it came on. But the also several times. A yeah, day, the same movie. Yeah, the same. Movie. I used to watch that movie. Over and over and over again. For I me, it was that. Moby Dick. Oh, wow. John Huston's Moby Dick. And in fact, Moby Dick is the seminal film in my life because that's the film where I looked at it and I said, you know what? I want to be a whaler. Right. And then I thought, well, no, I don't want to be. I want to be an actor. I want to be Gregory Peck. I want to be the guy who plays. Right. And then later, no, I want to be the director who directs Gregory right. Peck. So the, but I, the I, Steve McQueen moment. Oh, Steve McQueen. But the, the, the moment that I, I don't know. I, th I don't even remember the moment that I really wanted to become an actor. I think. What happened to me when I became an actor was that I, I, was, I was in California vi visiting a cousin of mine, mm -hmm. and then I just answered an ad for the movie The Right Stuff, and they were looking for extras. Okay. And then I became... I love that film. And then I, that was the first movie I worked on. What and scene? Then I, I worked on it for four months. Okay. <laughs> I played a Marine in the pillbox when, they, you know, when, uh, when Alan Shepard was going to go. Oh, I, yeah. I worked with everybody. I got the, a chance the, to meet everybody. On and then the I aircraft met, carrier? That, uh, no. Uh, it was... It was uh, the no, is it little when um, Alan Shepard was going up? It was actually like in a little. It looked like a box in in a desert that or that wherever it was where they yeah. actually were, uh, where Werner von Braun and other. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, anyway, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I also played a reporter, and then I became an extras coordinator oh. in the first movie that I was working on. Phil Kaufman, right? And it was yeah. just like yeah, right. Yeah. Phil, it was unbelievable. It was great, and I worked That's with. I met Eric Severide film. on the movie. <laughs> That's right. He has a, yeah, so yeah, he, he played himself. It was like I met all these people, and then. Mm. And then I just kept on getting more and more yeah. parts, and then I moved to Hollywood, and then I got my SAG card, and blah, right. blah, blah, and all this other stuff happened. But it was, uh, I don't know, it's, and then you get the, you catch the bug, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you caught the bug at such a young age. Yeah, and um, I mean, the, the fatal flight was I didn't move to Hollywood. I mean, I'd, I'd go there for a couple of weeks at a time, but come always come back, and right. friends of mine stayed there, and some of them have really good careers now. But it, it, New York is kind of getting there where you can find more and more work, but never... Well, really. where, where did you... Uh, was this shot in New, uh, was shot in New that York? That was shot in Brooklyn, yes. In Brooklyn? Yeah. Uh, so, and well, what is the, uh, the, 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 the story basically? So, uh, the story is that... <laughs> <laughs> can I... I'll give you the long version, but I'll give you truncated as much as I okay. When I was about eight years old, my uncle, who was... And again, Bull's Night Out. Bull's Night, yeah. Okay. My uncle was um, a cop and a fireman. Right. For some reason, he took in his head to tell me the story of this retired New York police detective named Frank Malerba. Okay. Frank Malerba was a famous cop in the 1950s who had a f several famous shootouts. Right. And his, he and his partner, Vinnie Heffern, ruled East Harlem. They were cool. known as Mutt and Jeff. Oh, cool. So my uncle said, what do I, what do I care? Right. In 1989, I'm reading the newspaper, retired police officer shoots and kills, shoots Mugger, doesn't kill him, shoots right. and wounds Mugger. Frank Malerba is the oh, cop. Wow. So the interview goes, uh, there's a Mike McAlary column, 
I'll be a, co a New York cop forever, no matter how long I'm retired. He was 79 years old when he had the shooting. Wow. So he's like been out of the job for 25 years. Right. So I, so I said, man, it's interesting. This retired cop has not given up the job. He clearly carries his gun with him. Right. So I made the story of the Bulls in about these retired cops who hang out in a bar in Brooklyn, see crime. This is the early, early 90s when you have the crack epidemic in New York. Wow. And they decide, we're going to clean this mess up because we're the only ones who know how. And that's where the story Okay, so again, th it's called the, uh, the Bulls Night Out. Right. And uh, did you bring something, a teaser to show or a I think there a is trailer? one. Yes, I think okay. the trailer. You know, um, I'd like to really share the, uh, the trailer with, uh, with the audience, if you don't mind. Uh, can I see it too? Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, so uh, enjoy the trailer for The Bulls Night Out. Look at you. Retired 15 years and still on the job. You're a crepe uniform, George. <laughs> I came up from Florida, George, to help you guys out here. Yeah, George, let's take the street back before it gets out of hand. What do you say, J.J.? I don't know. There's a young, strong cat that's what we're talking about. I want you to go see a guy named Marco Salvo. Yeah, I've heard of him. He has a real estate office over on Greenpoint Avenue. Mm -hmm. Here's the address. And? Ask him if these are his much work in the street out there. Tell George I know who these guys are hanging out in front of his place. That's Sonny Edwards' crew. Where is Sonny? I don't know who Where he is! is. I don't know who Where he is! is. No. Police! Don't move! Don't you move. Hey, JJ, is that gun loaded? I mean, well, look, there's like drug deals going on outside in broad daylight in front of everybody. And yeah, look at Jeremy, huh? Looks like he's trying to cop something for himself, standing out there like a jerk. But your dad, uh, your dad, he still acts like a cop, you know? <laughs> George. Why? Bad news. George, we can't just sit here and do nothing. Shut up, Louie. Got a gun! He's dead. All right, Jeff, you're in charge. I'll talk to you, George. I'm taking the train home. I'm tired of dead people. Wow, that is so awesome. I can't oh, believe it. It's great. You. It's fantastic. You, you know your stuff. And, and one thing, I like, I like that it's on film. Because yeah. so many, I mean, when you shoot with film, it has a different quality it than, does. than it's, video. It does. Uh, um, it's a nostalgia to it that's in the grain. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's almost more dream, dream sensation where the presence of video makes it more presence and active, which is a, a different So thing. do you do, like, I mean, it, it really looked, and this, and you did this how many years ago? Oh, we shot in 1995. It's unbelievable. I mean, you were talent, very talented even back then. Do you. Do, do, you, do you use storyboards when you do it? or Only for action scenes. Uh, uh, I may do a shot list, but, but the story, I mean, it's in my head, right. and I don't know if you can tell when I talk, I sort of talk quickly, and, right. and so sometimes I, I do have to write things down, so make, make sure everybody, so, or what I do as a director often, is I'll rehearse my right. direction. Right. The night before, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that. That's interesting. I'm going to tell the cameraman, I'm going to tell the actor this. Maybe jot down, okay, these things I'm going to tell them. And make sure I tell them at the right time when you know, they're most uh, ready for it. Do you update your shot list as you go along just in case Almost there's mm, an... Um, yeah, yeah, sometimes you have to. You have to be open to that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause... yeah definitely have to be open to that because um, uh, even a funny story, we had uh, that the Bulls had to take place in a bar right. and we had a, a doorway dolly which is about you know, I know, three feet wide, right. but behind the bar was two feet wide. We had a bunch of shots tracking, and right. this is not a movie set where just you, the wild walls. You just right. pull, you, the dolly this is a real not, bar. Yeah, right. would not fit behind the bar. Right. Right. So we had to. So improvise. Right. So Cameron said, I can, I'll can. i just handhold it and be smooth. I said, well, you know, if you're going to handhold it, don't be smooth. Right. Let it be rough. Let it be sort of shaky. and right. So it looks a little more immediate, which worked even better. Right. Than, yeah. That's it. I, it's, it is amazing. I use the shakiness too. You yeah, know, like yeah. A, a handheld shakiness. Right. <laughs> but um, I, I, I haven't used the dolly in my shows because yeah. my shows are like, in a way, similar to your web series. We do it in a day. You know, yeah, we shoot yeah. everything in Which a day. Which I love. I, I, I don't know if I can even, I'm old enough to say maybe I could not shoot a feature film because of the, the stamina it takes and, right. and the amount of 
you know, effort and. Uh, but given the budget, you do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Given the budget, I just have to sit back. You, know, you take care of the actors. So, do you there. use? Uh, you have assistant directors when you work on the set. For the most part, one of the things I like now is reducing the when it's because it's a low budget. If it's low budget, right? You know, if, if it's good, we're, ostensibly people aren't being paid or they're being paid, you know, right. car fare, transportation, etc. Right. Right. Reducing the, the crew. So I had a, a, we did one uh, film. Which JT actually cast the Rodneys. Right. I remember a couple of days. It was me, the sound guy. I was handling camera. Right. Uh, production manager. And makeup and wardrobe. Four of us, and we would go on the street in the Bronx. Right. And we just shoot our scenes. And, and I thought this is really great. It's just four of us, and right. you know, everybody's running back and forth, you know, right. taking different. But this, the sound man would come to me and say, "Look, you know, I'll, I'll look at the camera lens while you stand there and be an extra uh, standing, right. and I'm the director standing in the actor." Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I mean, how, it, how preposterous! That's is what that? happens all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and it's, but it's also the beauty of it. But you know, and the, the gorilla aspect of yeah. it too. I mm -hmm. mean, that's scary because there have been times when I felt that you know, like especially if we're doing cop scenes or something yeah. like that, and someone's got like a fake gun or something like that. You well, know, we'll on the Bulls and I, we used had a lot of real cops. We used a lot of real cops. Okay, that's good because at least you have real cops. Yeah. Say. Except except the two times we got in trouble, no cops. Went, we, <laughs> right. We shot a scene on the um, Long Island Railroad train station. Right. It just happened to be a day that we had Miss Skeletal Crew. The producer Aaron was there. Assistant director uh, Daniel, um, me, and the cameraman. Right. Cop gets off the train and says, What are you doing shooting here? Wow. And normally we have our cops right. flash their bag, okay, guys, go ahead. Right. I said, Well, you know, we're shooting this movie, we'll be gone in 15 right. minutes. He says, You better be gone, or I'm going to take your equipment. Oh, God. The film's only halfway shot. So now I'm saying to the actors, and the, and the actors are playing a very tender, romantic scene, oh. like, Hurry up, what are you doing? Hurry and say these lines, quick. You know? <laughs> That's it. Oh, and God. so they're, they're, they're like, What? Well, uh, I love you. What are you doing? <laughs> And then the cop comes back and he says, didn't I tell you to leave? And the camera's rolling. And so I had the stall. I was like, well, well, yeah, we're leaving now. He's packing up. Right. And they're acting over here. And then the camera's like, well, well, we're back. I'm, look, me, put, look at me, put this in the case. Here we go. We're going now. But that go happens everywhere. That yeah. happened in Hollywood to us. Uh, we were uh, filming a, 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 something on, on Sunset hmm. near Highland. And it was like in a very kind of sleazy area where they had these like mm -hmm. hookers and all this stuff. The best places to shoot are always right. those places. And a buddy of mine who was on in Living Color and a bunch of other shows. Mm. He, uh, he was playing a, a criminal on the show and the cops stopped him and they were about to arrest him because they thought he looked he was, like, yeah, 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 and yeah. it turned out that, you know, like we were yeah. able to stop that. <laughs> but, I mean, things like that happen. You know? I know. It's I know. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I once got stopped uh, working on a television show playing a cop because we, we, at lunchtime, we just left our area a little bit. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, these cop cars came. They thought we were, you know, like uh, yeah. impersonating officers. Yeah, like it, was, it didn't happen yeah, because yeah. the assistant director came out saying, they're with us, they're with us. <laughs> but it, it's, it's scary sometimes. I know, I know. I mean, it, but you have to have, you know, nerves of steel or right. the other part of your anatomy for right. of steel. So do you think you're going to uh, continue this for the rest of your life? It's a good question. I mean, it's always, this next project is, Fo ha contains 100% of my attention, right. and I can't see past. That. I mean, I do have other ideas, but this if if I and in fact if if I if I do look past the project I'm working on, then right. then they might be time together because I'm I'm thinking the wrong way. Right. I, I always try to keep just focused the, on the yeah the, the, yeah. Lim There's a line by Robert Moses, um, who built the Triborough Bridge, right. and he, they asked him at the end of his life, "How did you do all these things? The Triborough Bridge, the Belt Parkway, Wall Street?" He says, "I didn't do all those things. I did one at a, at a time. I put all my focus into that." Right. And then when that was done, I moved into the next project. So that's basically the... Yeah, I think that's a good philosophy. philosophy yeah. I, I mean, with everything. Just yeah. like uh, in, in life, you know, I do yeah. one show at a time. Yeah. And then, you yeah. know, and then, yeah, one show starts and then one show ends. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there's just really, there's only one thing left to say. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. <laughs>